Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public School. This is our third lesson of the week in Unit 8 of your Making Meaning book on determining important ideas and summarizing. We're going to keep reading the book A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry. And we're going to make three stops today for you to write down important ideas you learned from the book. I'm going to model the first stop, but you're going to have to do the second two with Think, Pair, Write. The materials you're going to need for this lesson are some sticky notes. And if you don't have sticky notes, it's totally fine. You can just cut up a piece of paper into little squares. You'll also need a pen or a pencil. And then you need a piece of paper that you can divide into three sections for the three stops we're going to take while we read. Let's review the important ideas we wrote down yesterday. In the last lesson, we decided these were the important ideas in the first half of the book. We said a long time ago, the river valley was home to many animals and that native people settled along the river. Then we said the native people respected nature and they only killed the animals they needed to survive. We said a white trader came to the Nashua River and started a trading post. Then lots of settlers came and started chopping down the forest. And finally, we said the settlers kicked the Native Americans off their land. So a war started that the settlers won. But still, the Nashua River was mostly healthy. We're going to start reading now. And remember to think about this question. What is important to understand and remember about this part of the story? At the start of the new century, an industrial revolution. And the industrial revolution was a period of change in which machines were used more and more to do the work previously done by hand. At the start of the new century, an industrial revolution came to the Nashua's banks and waters. Many new machines were invented. Some spun thread from wool and cotton. Others wove the thread into cloth. Some machines turned wood to pulp, and pulp is a mixture of ground up wood, water, and other matter used to make paper. Some machines turned wood to pulp, and others made the pulp into paper. Leftover pulp and dye, and dye is a substance used to color cloth or paper. Leftover pulp and dye and fiber was dumped into the Nashua River, whose swiftly flowing current washed away the waste. These were times of much excitement, times of progress and invention. Factories along the Nashua River made new things of new materials. Telephones and radios and other things were made of plastics. Chemicals and plastic waste were also dumped into the river. Soon the Nashua's fish and wildlife grew sick from this pollution. And pollution is harmful materials that damage air, water, and soil. Nashua's fish and wildlife grew sick from this pollution. Now it's time for us to stop and write down an important idea from the part we just read. I'm going to model this one for you right here. Hmm, let's think. One important idea in this part of the book is that pollution from the factories are starting to hurt the river and its wildlife. Okay, so I'm going to write down hmm, pollution. Um, the factories began to hurt the river and its wildlife. You can write down the exact same note that I did for this stop. We're going to continue reading now. And remember to ask yourself this question. What is important to understand and remember about this part of the story?
The paper mills continued to pollute the Nashua's waters. Every day for many decades, pulp was dumped into the Nashua, and as the pulp clogged up the river, it began to run more slowly. As the pulp decomposed, and decomposed means rotted or decayed. As the pulp decomposed, bad smells welled up from the river. People who lived near the river smelled its stench and stayed far from it. Each day, as the mills dyed paper red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashua ran whatever color the paper was dyed. Soon, no fish lived in the river. No birds stopped on their migration. No one could see pebbles shining up through murky water. The Nashua was dark and dirty. The Nashua was slowly dying. The paper mills continued to pollute the Nashua's waters. Every day for many decades, pulp was dumped into the Nashua, and as the pulp clogged up the river, it began to run more slowly. As the pulp decomposed, and decomposed means rotted or decayed. As the pulp decomposed, bad smells welled up from the river. People who lived near the river smelled its stench and stayed far from it. Each day, as the mills dyed paper red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashua ran whatever color the paper was dyed. Soon, no fish lived in the river. No birds stopped on their migration. No one could see pebbles shining up through murky water. The Nashua was dark and dirty. The Nashua was slowly dying. We're going to turn to a partner now. And remember, your partner can be a friend or a family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. And it can also be someone you're calling with an imaginary phone. Also, if you speak a language other than English, feel free to use whatever language you feel most comfortable with. Turn to your partner and tell them, what's the most important idea in the part of the story we just read? What do you think you're going to need to understand and remember? Don't forget, use our prompt, the reason I think that is, to try and back up what you say. If you don't know what to say, you can ask yourself, what is this part of the story mainly about? You could also answer the question, if you had to tell what this part is about in one sentence, what would it be? Before you write down your important idea, we're going to reread this passage. And the reason we're going to reread it is because good readers always reread to find information that they missed the first time around. The paper mills continued to pollute the Nashua's waters. Every day for many decades, pulp was dumped into the Nashua, and as the pulp clogged up the river, it began to run more slowly. As the pulp decomposed, and decomposed means rotted or decayed. As the pulp decomposed, bad smells welled up from the river. People who lived near the river smelled its stench and stayed far from it. Each day, as the mills dyed paper red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashua ran whatever color the paper was dyed. Soon, no fish lived in the river. No birds stopped on their migration. No one could see pebbles shining up through murky water. The Nashua was dark and dirty. The Nashua was slowly dying. One night, Oeana, 
a descendant of Wiwa, and descendant means child, grandchild, or great-grandchild of someone, a descendant of Wiwa, who still lived by the Nashua, had a dream so vivid that he awoke in wide-eyed wonder. In his dream, Chief Wiwa's spirit returned to the river and saw it as it was now, still and deadly. Chief Wiwa mourned for the Nashua, but where his tears fell upon the dirty waters, the waters were cleansed until the river once again flowed freely. The next morning, Oeana went to speak to his friend Marion. When he told her of his dream, she said, I had this dream also. River with the pebbled bottom is the name Wiwa gave it, but today no pebbles shine up through the Nashua's river's waters. Together, they decided something must be done. Marion traveled to each town along the Nashua. She spoke of the river's history and of her vision to restore it. No longer do we have a river. It's a stinking, smelly sewer. But it wasn't always this way. People listened and imagined a sparkling river full of fish. They imagined pebbles shining up through clear waters. They signed petitions, and petitions are documents signed by many people that request government officials to take action or to change a policy. They signed petitions and sent letters. They protested to politicians and showed them jars of dirty water. They convinced the paper mills to build a plant to process the waste. And process the waste just means to make their garbage less harmful. They persuaded the factories to stop dumping. Finally, new laws were passed and the factories stopped polluting. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and write in stop two what important ideas you remember from this section. Remember, if you run out of time, you can always pause the video or do your writing later. You might have written down something like this. The pollution got so bad that the Nashua River was disgusting. Then Marion Oeana decided to try and fix the problem. It led a campaign until new laws were passed to end the pollution in the river. We're going to start reading again. Remember, ask yourself this question. What is important to understand and remember about this part of the story? Slowly, slowly the Nashua's current began to clean its water. Year by year, the river carried away the dyes and fiber to the ocean. Marion and Oeana thanked the people who had helped to clean the Nashua. Through the meadows, towns, and cities, the Nashua once again flows freely. Paper pulp no longer clogs it. Chemicals no longer foul it. And foul it just means to make it dirty. Chemicals no longer foul it. Now we walk along its banks and row upon its fragrant waters. We can set our boats upon it and with its current drift downstream. Once again, the river runs wild through a towering forest greenway. And the greenway is a path lined with trees. Through a towering forest greenway. Red-tailed hawks and barred owls live here. Geese pause from their long migration and rest on the riverbanks. Deer come to drink from the river's waters. We too 
have settled by this river. Pebbles shine up through clear water. Nashua is what we call it, river with the pebbled bottom. Turn to your partner again and tell them what's the most important idea in the part of the story we just read. Remember, you can use whatever language you feel most comfortable with and use our prompt. The reason I think that is to back up what you say. If you don't know what to say, you can ask yourself, what is this part of the story mainly about? You could also answer the question, if you had to tell what this part is about in one sentence, what would it be? We're going to reread this passage again. Remember to listen for information that you might have missed the first time we read it. Slowly, slowly, the Nashua's current began to clean its water. Year by year, the river carried away the dyes and fiber to the ocean. Marion and Oeana thanked the people who had helped to clean the Nashua. Through the meadows, towns, and cities, the Nashua once again flows freely. Paper pulp no longer clogs it. Chemicals no longer foul it. And foul it just means to make it dirty. Chemicals no longer foul it. Now we walk along its banks and row upon its fragrant waters. We can set our boats upon it and with its current drift downstream. Once again, the river runs wild through a towering forest greenway. And the greenway is a path lined with trees. Through a towering forest greenway, red-tailed hawks and barred owls live here. Geese pause from their long migration and rest on the riverbanks. Deer come to drink from the river's waters. We too have settled by this river. Pebbles shine up through clear water. Nashua is what we call it, river with the pebbled bottom. Now it's your turn. Write what is important about what we just read in stop three. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. You might have written something like this for stop three. The Nashua slowly got rid of all the pollution. People were able to use it again. And the wildlife returned. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. You need to get a fiction book or a narrative nonfiction book, and remember to read for at least 30 minutes. We're gonna continue practicing how to find important ideas while we do our IDR today. Use those sticky notes, or you could just use cut up squares of paper. And while you read, anytime you find an important idea, put down one of the sticky notes and write down what that idea is. Here's an example. The book I'm going to be reading for IDR today is called I Survived the Battle of Gettysburg, 1863. I know from the summary on the back of the book that this book is about a boy who used to be enslaved and finds himself in the middle of the famous Battle of Gettysburg. I'm going to start reading here, and anytime I find an important idea, I'm going to write it on a sticky note and put it in the book. Chapter 1. July 2nd, 1863, a battlefield in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It was the Battle of Gettysburg, the biggest and bloodiest of the Civil War. Mighty armies from the United States, North and South, were fighting to the death. 
cannons shook the ground and set the sky on fire. Bullets flew through the air like deadly raindrops. And in the middle of it stood in the, in the middle of it all stood an eleven year old boy named Thomas. Just three weeks ago, just three weeks before, Thomas had been a slave living on a farm in Virginia. And now he was on this battlefield in Pennsylvania. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my post-it over. Hmm. I'm gonna write down my important idea. Thomas was enslaved on a farm, but now is at the Battle of Gettysburg. Let's keep reading. To help the northern soldiers who were fighting so he could be free, Thomas had come to bring the men more ammunition for their rifles. He had to get away from there. He needed to get back to his little sister who was waiting where he, it was safe. But then a huge cannonball came sailing through the air, and crashed into an ammunition wagon. Wow, I'm gonna put another note here. And I'm gonna say, Thomas is helping the Northern soldiers and looking out for his little sister. This is what you need to do while you read your IDR book today. Okay, let's get reading. We will see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.